14 rules to write IUPAC name of organic compounds perfectly. Which rule you have to start with? What is the first rule we have to follow in order to write the IUPAC name of the organic compounds? Many of the times we think that it is the longest chain rule. But let us consider one of this example. Here we can select the longest chain. So let us start numbering from any of the terminals. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So totally it is having the 8 carbon longest chain. So this longest chain is having the 8 carbons. But here we can identify that uh, the COOH is the one of the principal function group in this uh, compound. And we can also select a chain which includes the, this principal function group. So suppose let us give the numbering here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now this chain is having only 6 carbons. So which should be selected? Whether 8 carbon chain or 6 carbon chain. Since the 8 carbon chain does not have the principal functional group, so we should not select uh, this 8 carbon chain as the parent chain. The parent chain should include the principal functional group. So now this is the parent chain. So that's why the longest chain rule is not the first rule while we write the IUPAC nomenclature. So in this video, we will see what are the 14 rules required for writing the IUPAC name of organic compounds in a perfect way and what is the order of the IUPAC rules we have to follow. And here few of the rules should be followed in a specific order and few of the rules can be used at any time. So we will discuss all these 14 rules required to write the IUPAC nomenclature along with few of the examples. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. So let's go with the rule one. The rule one indicates the identification of principal functional group. The principal functional group is represented in the name as a suffix and any other functional groups are represented as the prefix. Now let us take one example here. Let us consider a simple structure like this. Now we design the two functional groups. One is the carboxylic acid and second is the hydroxyl group, which should be selected as the principal functional group. And as we know that uh, the carboxylic acid is uh, considered as a principal function group because of the more preference to the carboxylic acids. Now we can start the numbering from this carbon. So this is one, two, three and four. The structure having the four carbon chain along with the carboxylic acid at the first position. So it is represented as butanoic acid. And at the fourth position is having the side chain that is the hydroxyl group. So four hydroxy butanoic acid. But how can we assess which functional group is the principal functional group and which is treated as the side chain? So for this we should know the priority order of these function groups and in our previous video we have discussed in detail how easily we can remember the priority order of these function groups in the IUPAC nomenclature. Here the carboxylic acids are given the first priority and then they are followed by sulfonic acids and their derivatives. And after this uh, sulfonic acids, the acid derivatives like the anhydrides, esters, acid halides and amides are given the preference. And after this, the derivatives of this amides, for example, in the amide, the NH2 is uh, substituted with another NH2, it becomes hydrazides. So hydrazides, imides, imidines are given the next preference. These groups are followed by nitriles. Nitriles are having the triple bond. And then this is followed by the function groups having the double bonds like aldehydes and ketones. Finally, the priority order ends with the function groups having the single bond like the alcohols, thiols, amines, imines, hydrazines, and ethers. Ethers are considered as the least preferred function groups and they are always considered as a side change in the IUPAC nomenclature. So once we know this priority order, we can easily identify the principal function group. By this, we can fix the IUPAC rule one. That is the selection of the principal functional group. Now let us go with the rule two. Rule two is the selection of the parent chain. And once we identify the principal function group, we can select the parent chain, which is nothing but the longest possible chain. So a parent chain should be selected in such a way that it includes the principal function group and it is again the longest possible chain. So let us consider one example here. So here carboxylic acid is the principal function group and we can start the numbering here 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 
now we can identify a 5 carbon chain containing the carboxylic acid otherwise we can also give the numbering like 1 2 3 and 4 that is a 4 carbon chain but here the parent chain should be longest which includes the principal French group so the first one should be selected so it is considered as a pentanoic acid now this pentanoic acid is having a side chain at the third position so 3 methyl so 3 methyl pentanoic acid let us consider another example here so here the principal French group is the aldehyde cho so you can start the numbering from the aldehyde so this is 1 2 3 and 4 now we have a parent chain with the four carbons but we can also give the numbering in another way like 1 2 3 4 5 now this chain is having the five carbons as we have already discussed the parent chain should be longest chain which includes the principal functional group so here even this five carbon chain is the longest chain but it does not include the principal functional group so it is not considered as a parent chain but the what of the four carbon chain which includes the principal functional group is considered as the parent chain now this compound is having the four carbons with aldehyde so it is considered as the butanol and this butanol is having a side chain at the second position which is nothing but the ethyl so 2 ethyl so the name of this compound is 2 ethyl butanol in this way we have to select the longest chain which includes the principal functional group if a chain is longest but it does not include the principal functional group it should not be considered as the parent chain rule 3 selection of the parent chain from more possibilities let us consider this case so here two functional groups are there carboxylic acid and aldehyde according to the priority order carboxylic acid should be given the preference now we can start the numbering from the carboxylic acid so this is one two three four five so now this chain is having the five carbons otherwise we can give the numbering like this one two three four five now this chain is also having the five carbons so which chain should be selected as the parent chain so here we can see some of the criteria for selection of the parent chain from more possibilities so according to the criteria one we have to select a longest chain with the maximum number of the principal functional groups and if this criteria one again is having the two possibilities we have to go for the criteria two longest chain with the maximum number of any functional groups and again if it is having the two possibilities then we have to go for the criteria three the longest chain with the maximum number of side chains so let us take the same example here now it is having the carboxylic acid and aldehyde here two chains are there with the same length that is five carbons then we have to go for the criteria two that is the longest chain with maximum number of uh, any function groups so here this chain is having the two function groups on the other hand uh, other chain is having only one function group so this is selected as the parent chain and this is not considered as the parent chain now this compound is have a five carbon carboxylic acid so it is called as pentanoic acid and at the third position it is having a side chain 3 ethyl and fifth position it is having an aldehyde when it is considered as a side chain it is given as an oxo so there is 5 oxo so 3 ethyl 5 oxo pentanoic acid is the name of this compound let us consider another example now here we can select the parent chain here 1 2 3 4 5 otherwise we can give the naming numbering to this same compound in another way 1 2 3 4 5 we can observe two possibilities and there is no principal function group or any other type of function group then which chain should be selected as the parent chain if we are going to give the numbering by the first one we can observe that one side chain is present but if we give the numbering by the second one we can observe that two side chains are present so according to the criteria three we have to select the longest chain with maximum number of side chains now this is having one side chain is not considered as a parent chain but this is having the two side chains is considered as the parent chain and since this compound is having the five carbons it is considered as a pentane derivative but here we have to see the numbering in this direction we can get the numbering in the three and four but if you give the reverse numbering we, we can get the locand side chains at the second and third position so third position ethyl and second position methyl so 3 ethyl 2 methyl pentane is the name of this compound rule 4 selection of the root name so we can select the root name based on the number of carbons and chain length so 1 is meth 2 is eth 3 is probe 4 is but and 5 is pent and so on so let us consider one example here so here again the carboxylic acid is the principal functional group so we can start the numbering from the carboxylic acid so this is 1 2 
3, 4 and 5. And here the methyl group is considered as the side chain which is attached at the third position. So 3 methyl. And this chain is a pentane but here because it's having a double bond we have to remove this in and then we have to add in. And that is a 3 in. Double bond is present at the third position. But again this is having a a function group so within the in we have to replace the e with the suffix of the principal function group so that is oic acid combining all these the name of this compound is uh, 3 methyl pent 3 enoic acid let us go with the rule 5 numbering of the parent chain once we have selected the parent chain and we have selected the root name then we have to give the numbering to the parent chain in a specific way so numbering should be done in such a way that the least number to the principal functional group should be given. Let us consider this example. So here the OH is the principal function group and we can give the numbering to this parent chain in two directions. So this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 where the hydroxyl group is given as the fourth position and here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here the OH group is given at the second position. Since the principal function group should be given the least numbering, so the first one is not correct and second one is the correct one. So now the name of this compound is pentane minus E plus 2 all that is a pentane 2 all or simply it is a 2 pentanol. Rule 6. Criteria for numbering in case of more possibilities. Again if we have a more number of possibilities in numbering of this parent chain, what are the criteria we have to follow? So criteria 1 is the sum of the locand should be minimum and criteria 2 is the least number to the side chain that comes alphabetically first. So let us take the examples for these two criteria. So the first criteria is the lowest sum rule. So let us consider this uh, structure. Now here it is having the three side chains bromine, chlorine and chlorine. And we can give the numbering to this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now in this direction the sum of the locants is 2 plus 3 plus 4 that is 9. And we can also give the numbering in another direction. So this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So here the sum of the locants is 3 plus 4 plus 5 that is 12. So according to the criteria 1 the sum of the locant should be minimum. The numbering in this direction which gives the 12 as the sum of the locants is not correct and sum of the locants 9 is correct. So this is the right way of numbering of parent chain. So the name of this compound is 3-bromo-2,4-dichlorohexene. And let us consider the second criteria that is numbering in the alphabetical order. So let us take one example here. Now here this chlorine and this is a bromine. And if we give the numbering 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 now the sum of the locants is 2 plus 4 that is equal to 6 and if we give the numbering in the other direction again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so again the sum of the locants is 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. Now we have the two possibilities here in both of the directions the sum of the locants is same that is 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. Then which direction should be selected? Since the bromo starts with the letter B compared with the chloro C so if we arrange in the alphabetical order bromine should be given preference. So bromo should be given preference compared with the chloro. So the numbering which gives the least number to the bromo is correct. So this is 2 bromo 4 chloro pentane. Rule 7. Substitution on heteroatom. So let us consider this example and here the amine is the principal function group. Here it is a tertiary amine. And here we can start the numbering with the carbon attached to the amine. So this is 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now this nitrogen is having the two side chains that is the methyl groups. So we can consider this as N and dimethyl. So whenever a substitution is there on the heteroatom we have to indicate with the particular heteroatom. So here N and dimethyl and this is a four carbon chain so it is a butane and where we have to replace the E with the amine. So this is the N and dimethyl butanamine. Rule 8. The numbering of side chain. Already we have seen that how can we give the numbering to the parent chain. Now in this rule we can see how can we give the numbering to the side chain. Let us consider this example. So here the carboxylic acid is the principal function group. So we can start the numbering from this carboxylic acid. So 1, 2, 3. Then we have to select the longest chain. So this is 4, 5 and 6. So 6 carbon longest chain including the principal function group is the parent chain. So it is considered as a hexanoic acid. This hexanoic acid is having a side chain at the third position. To the side chain we have to give the numbering 
from the point of attachment so this is the one and this is two it is having the two further side chains to the side chain one is the oh group second is the chlorine group oh group is attached at the second position chlorine group is attached at the first position so now now we can write this name one chloro two hydroxy here one prime and two prime can be indicated to differentiate the numbering of the side chain so in case of side chain we have to start the numbering from the point of attachment irrespective of uh, the position of other functional groups within the side chain rule 9 multiple substitutions so let us consider this structure now we can select the parent chain 1 2 3 4 5 so it is like a 5 carbon parent chain it is having three chlorine groups at these three positions now the same substituent is present for more than one time so then we can use the terms like di tri tetra so here the three chlorine groups are there so we can use a trichloro and we have to indicate their positions so two three four trichloro pentane rule 10 side chains with further side chains let us consider one of the structure here and this structure is not having principal function group so we can start the numbering from any direction one two three four five six seven eight nine so this is the longest chain with nine carbons and here we can observe that at the fifth position it is hanging the side chain so this is one of the side chain and is another side chain this side chain is having further side chain so suppose if we consider the side chain as the ethyl ethyl group is having again the one of the group at the first position that is a methyl and simply this group can be considered as an isopropyl group so isopropyl group is present at the fifth position and here we can observe that uh, two isopropyl groups are present here we should not consider this isopropyl as the diisopropyl because the this side chain is having the further side chain we have to use the prefix like the bis and tris since the isopropyl group is present at the two times we have to take the prefix bis so now this name of this compound is the 55 five bis isopropyl and non -an. So fifth position isopropyl group is present two times but we have to use the prefix bis because the side chain is having the further side chains. Rule 11 conjunction of multiple groups. Let us consider two aromatic ring systems are attached with a single carbon. Now both of these aromatic rings when considered as a side chain they can be treated as a phenyl groups. Now two phenyl groups are attached with a methane so this is a diphenyl methane. Here we are going to use the term di because here phenyl groups are attached with an alkyl group like the methane but now consider this structure so here the two phenyl groups are directly attached without any carbon in between them then we have to indicate the rings by the terms like bi ter and quarter because here two phenyl groups are there so we have to take the bi as a prefix and this becomes biphenyl phenyl is treated as a radical but here biphenyl is not a radical it is a name of the compound since we are going to use the bi which indicates that phenyl groups are attached by single bond in this way when the rings are attached without any carbon between them we have to use the terms like bi ter quarter instead of the terms like di tri and tetra rule 12 arrangement in alphabetical order so if we consider this structure we can give the numbering one two three four five six it is having the side chains like chlorine and the chlorine and bromo so when we are arranging the alphabetical order bromine comes first so three bromo two four dichloro hexane in this way what are the names of the side chain should be arranged in the alphabetical order rule 13 alphabetical order and includes and excludes so while we are giving the alphabetical order which type of term should be included in the alphabetical order and which type of term should not be included in the alphabetical order so let us see the excluded terms terms like bi ter quarter are not considered similarly the terms like di tri tetra are not considered and similarly secondary and tertiary terms are also not considered while we are giving the alphabetical order but few of the terms are considered in the alphabetical order so let us see what the terms which are included in the alphabetical order so when we take the prefixes like the cyclo and benzo similarly 1h 2h any of the indicated hydrogen should be considered and when we use the terms like iso and neo they should be also considered in the alphabetical order rule 14 naming of radicals so if a side chain is attached by single bond it is called as univalent and we have to indicate by the suffix yl and if it is attached by a double bond it is bivalent we have to indicate by ilidine 
and if it is a trivalent we have to indicate by ilidine so let us take one example here it is a one of a radical with ch3 ch2 and it is having a single bond and is another radical which is uh, having the double bond and is another radical which is having the triple bond when the radical is having the single bond we have to replace the n with the yl so this ethane minus an plus yl it becomes ethyl and if it is attached by two bonds that is having the double bond then we have to take the ethane minus an plus ilidine so this is the ethylidine it is a radical which is attached to the parent chain by the double bond but this radical is not having the double bond in between the carbons so when it is attached to the parent chain by a double bond we have to replace the an with the ilidine so ethane minus an plus ilidine it becomes ethylidine similarly when this uh, chain is attached by triple bond then we have to consider ethane minus an plus ilidine so that is the ethylidine in this way if a radical is attached by single bond yl if it is attached by double bond ilidine and if it is attached by triple bond it is ilidine so these are the 14 iupac rules that are required to write the name of organic compounds without any confusion and hope you enjoyed this video post your comments how these rules are useful in writing the iupac names thank you for watching this video